Hello, good evening. I am Countertop Commander. I'm going to go ahead and keep getting set up while I talk about what's going on tonight. Um, I hope you all are doing great. And basically, I, as Countertop Commander, I play Commander games. I play, I try to play about twice a week. I also stream video games a little bit on Saturday mornings, but pretty much Sunday and Thursday are the days that I play. On Sundays, I do kind of a teaching stream, so you can show up and if you have any questions about how to play Magic or Magic in general, I'll try to answer them. I can't say that I'm the best teacher, but I do try a little bit. And during Sundays, I play kind of beginner decks against each other. I have 10 different beginner decks that I cycle through every single Sunday. And they're meant to be real easy to learn from and provide a lot of good examples for how to play. They give a lot of different strategies, so you can tune in then if you're really looking for something kind of simple and easy, easily digestible. On Thursdays, though, like today, um, sometimes Wednesdays, but usually, so Wednesday or Thursday, I play kind of rough and tumble stuff. I do kind of whatever I want. It's sort of Wild West. I throw, throw three to four different decks up against each other, and today, for example, I am playing um, some of my quicker, stronger decks. Uh, I don't generally play on sort of a power scale. I don't generally play uh, even close to competitive EDH. So if you're looking for that, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that because I play Commander. I've been playing Commander for quite some time, so I play uh, much more of a casual Commander than other people do. Uh, and that's just kind of how it is. So tonight we have a Dacon Black Blade control deck. We have a deck that I call Wing Over, which is a sort of typical Feather, the Redeemed deck. Then we have a Animar Soul of Elements um, Mutate deck. And then we have this last one, which is Sliver Hive Lord, because of course. <laughs> and I don't, that's kind of the reason that we're playing in this sort of a setting is because it's so hard to be able to play a deck like Slivers, especially a diff like a powerful Slivers deck without getting too close to a e either seeming very competitive when maybe you're not, or, uh, you know, like trying to bring a Sliver deck to a competitive game generally doesn't help. I mean, Sliver, the first Sliver as a food chain deck is possible, but that doesn't necessarily make it the best one so we're going to see how this plays out it could end up being that one deck wins really really quickly and the other ones fail miserably so we're definitely going to find out um and if that's so if we do have if we do have a deck that wins really quickly then we will probably uh it's it's kind of a it's kind of just a regular control deck it has a lot of removal in it and then trying to use dac on to win so no it's not necessarily a combo deck or anything like that it's just kind of a control deck basically um let's see let's go and get started and also hello mr b how's it going tonight let's see helm of cauldra there's also a lot of equipment in this deck because i felt compelled to put a bunch of high costing, not high costing, but costly, monetarily speaking, costly uh, lands and equipment into the deck. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, I'm not necessarily big on trying to make the, the strongest decks possible. I, I don't generally do that. So um, now that, do that doesn't mean I don't have somewhat stronger decks. I think at least the feather deck is a little bit rougher it lost a little bit with paradox engine unfortunately that was a unfortunate loss but it still i think has a lot of really good combinations in it so i would say that it's probably higher than sort of mid-level but definitely not competitive because it's not like a stacks build or anything um snowfield sinkhole and then let's go ahead and pass to feather here Remind me again which decks you play, because I think I remember you've have, you've been in here before, right? I'm trying to remember because it's been it's been a while since I played Magic, so 
Uh, I had some Father's Day stuff that I really wanted to do, so I missed the last last one. Mm. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, so I'm sitting on uh, nearly a hundred built commander decks currently. Oh, thank goodness I needed this land so badly. Okay, um, let's go and do dwarf ruins and to play tapped. I, I needed another planes because I have one planes in hand. I need two to be able to cast feather on turn. So yeah, I was really hoping to hit that. <laughs> Um, I think there is some ways for my Feather deck to be able to get Feather out on the second turn, but it's not necessarily something that I see all too often. So let's see, Forest, that'll, that'll be okay. It's not great, that's not a great one, but it'll be okay. Um, because we do have all of the lands that we need in our hand already. Let me think. Hmm. Hmm. I think Steam Vents makes the most so that we can rampant growth on turn two. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to... The, I, I haven't built a competitive, competitive deck in a long time now. The last one I built was an Edric deck when Edric was still wrecking the format, basically. Nice. Striking Sliver. Hmm, I guess we could actually, we could technically start off by getting that one out. Is that what we want to do, though? Hmm. <laughs> we don't quite have all the lands we need, but we're still pretty close. I wonder if I do... Let me think. Yeah, let's go and get out Sliver for Striking Sliver first. Hmm. Let's see. A uh, hello, Turbo Extra Turns, Sephiroth, Dungeon Diving, Jenny Faye, Cabaretti, Cacophony Upgrade, um, Shorkai, Lockdown, Negan. Forced Sacrifice, Will Lucas, two mana value turbo combo, Atraxa Equipments, Tiamat, Gigantha, Dragon Tribal, Thantis Goad, um, Felden Combo, Nikia, Oops All the Creatures, that's funny, <laughs> Idris Cast from Exile Matters, Ulamog Combo, Burakos Folk Hero Party Time Upgrade, and Sahili the Gifted Vehicles. So I know most of those, um, or I know a lot of those, not a lot of the first ones. I mean, pretty much once you get down to Will and Lucas, that's when I start recognizing names, basically. I'm not up into any of the new cards. <laughs> basically, anything after Call Time, I'm not going to be super familiar with. But I do know, I, I do recognize Tiamat Gigantha, just because I know Gigantha already. That That was from um the monster set but tiamat i i came after call time i just rem i just know that they printed the card that's all because it's a dragon so of course i looked at it because i like dragons um let's see and yeah felden idris ulamog i mean those are all ones that i'm going to be familiar i mean that i that i know by name anyway um but yeah it looks like you have a lot of combo decks and probably some pr uh, higher powered decks, what I should say, right? Let's see, untap, draw. Sword of Fire and Ice, nice. Um, we are on track to at least getting Smothering Tithe out, so that's good. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I mean, Sahili the Gifted. I mean, Sahili the Gifted can still kind of do that, but I mean, I guess vehicles probably may be a little less so. But I was trying to think the most egregious Sahili Gifted deck that I've read about, at least, but it's maybe been a little while. 
Let me think about this. We not we don't really have anything to play on this turn, so I'll just go ahead and hollowed fountain. Do we have? No, not currently. We don't have anything for force of will. That's okay though. Okay. Sack five artifact creatures. Yep. Yeah. That definitely works. I have a four... The vehicle deck that I own is a four-color one with Silas and... Um, crap. Crap, what is his name? Hang on. I can look it up real quick. Do, do, do. Akiri, Silas, Ren, and Akiri. So, yeah, I, I wanted to be able to do a four color deck that was in those colors. So white, black, um, blue, and red. So non-green. Um, because there, I'm trying to think now the, there's the other commander that people use a lot for that, but uh, for that four color combination. But since she's so combo oriented, you kind of get picked out if you <laughs> if you're playing it in a casual group, they pick on you. <laughs> so, Pyromancer's Gauntlet. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I think that we go ahead and planes, and we will. Ruby Medallion here, just so that we can cut down on some of our costs. It's, we'll get to more of that later. Okay. That also works. <laughs> Time Sieve is a pretty strong card. It's been a strong card since it's, since it's been printed, that's for darn sure. Frontier Bovac, okay. But I think we're going to Rampant Growth here. And what are we going to get? I think that... Because we're going to have other forest colors. I think blue is what we want. Hmm. I'm trying to remember now. We're going to have natural blue. We I guess we have blue right there. Do we just want more green? I mean... That might be okay. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna go and get an island. Oh, convenient island. Actually, I think we need to do it this way a little bit. Oh, there we go. Yeah, come on. Island. Okay. That guarantees the Animar next turn. At least. Let's see, untap, draw, hibernation sliver. That's good. That'll be good for when we actually can can do anything um i can't remember what dual lands i have in this deck so let's windswept teeth and see what pops out um yeah minus okay because we definitely need blue if we can get blue let's see do, 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 do. strip mine there's hollowed fountain We'll think about that, because I think... Hmm. Yeah, at least we have some dual lands in here. That's good. Breeding pool might be... So we can get green. No, I guess we have green. We do need blue and black, though. Unfortunately, we can't do that with... The Windswept Heath. We don't have the Tri-Lands in this deck. 
Too many decks, not enough land. Okay, we'll go with Hollowed Fountain and we will probably just spit out Diffusion Sliver so that we can start protecting our Slivers. That also gives us a nice spread of other colors too. Do you have a deck that you're wanting to try to build but you don't have the cards for? Or are you content with the 14, de 14 decks that you currently have? Let's, we're going to do that into play untapped for Diffusion Sliver. So let's see, who do we attack? I think we attack the Feather deck in here. You try to stick around 10, okay. Just because 10 is a good number, does it like, do you, do you have like a case or something that makes it a lot easier to carry around 10 rather than 14? <laughs> I know that feeling at least, if that is the case. Um, we actually, yeah, lost two more life. Okay. Okay. That's all we're going to do with that turn. We're just going to head back to Dakon. And I think unless Dakon draws something else. Oh, Marsh Flats. Okay, well, that gets us at least closer to the mana that we need for Dakon. Um... Fetid Heath, and we will go ahead and get out the sword while we still can, and we'll Smothering Tithe next turn, just to set it up a little bit. That's actually what I use for the beginner decks that I own. I basically carry all the all of those ten together all the time whenever I'm going to, like, show people how to play Magic or... Uh, it's it's really good for like these beginner decks are really good for using it as kind of like a board game with people who don't play magic or know really anything about it at all then i can just instead of like bringing forbidden island or uh you know uh what is it sellers of Catan or something like that i can just bring this case of magic cards and we can play that instead and it works out really really well Uncanny speed, awesome. We want planes, and let's go ahead and shoot out Feather here. Okay. Feather's going to be super, super good next turn. Yeah, they're just ridiculous. <laughs> well, and people wouldn't be able to play them. I mean, it would be, a, it would be kind of amusing to try to see if see somebody who doesn't know anything about magic try to play one of like one of those combo decks <laughs> but that would only be interesting like the first time you did it <laughs> untap draw oh nice Me mecha godzilla okay we can still cast animar and do the frontier bovac into play tapped so let's go and do that Let's get out Animar. This should be amusing, people playing artifacts, because I'm going to probably wreck that here soon. <laughs> okay. Pass. Passing. Animar having pseudo sort of protection against several of the colors at this table. <laughs> but not all of them, thank goodness. Okay, untap, draw a card. Bone Scythe Sliver, nice. We will actually be able to cast that one. Unfortunately, we still are short two colors of mana to be able to cast the first Sliver and start going really crazy. I don't know if you can hear my cat is walking around the table <laughs> that I'm using and whining at the top of her voice. <laughs> Hmm. So I need to take a little drink there. Okay. So unfortunately, we can't really cast anything else. We can't really attack the um, the feather this turn, but we do have first strike at least, so we can 
Let's see, protection from white and black with Animar. So maybe we go ahead and deal two damage to Animar while we can this turn because we're not going to be able to block it. So he's not going to block this turn and we're not going to block next turn. <laughs> Assuming that he attacks us. So let's see. Dacon certainly has a, a, a good, strong move this turn. Let's go ahead and untap, draw a card. Oh, chase the Mind Sculptor, because of course. <laughs> um, yeah, Blink Moth, and we will pop out the Smothering Tithe, which is funny because sm we do have Revel and Riches next turn that we can play, and that's... Well, I guess actually we can just wait until Smothering Tithe has us enough treasures. And then we can... Um, sorry. Smothering Tithe, and once we have enough treasures, then we can play Revel and Riches and possibly win sort of out of nowhere. Um, and I think that's it. Whenever an opponent draws a card, I need to remember that. Actually, let's see. I think I may have a treasure card to help keep track of this. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Maybe I have one. Yeah, here we go. We have treasure cards. Okay. Let's see. So this right here. Yeah, I know about Walk the Aeons, and I have it in other decks. I just don't have it in this particular one. <laughs> um, let's see. So, Feather is definitely not going to pay for the treasure. Because we need all of our mana. The Apostle's Blessing. Nice. Okay, let's see. So, Mountain. Hmm. I think it's important to get Sunforger out this turn because of how tricksy it can be. And we have the mana for casting the Sunforger. But then we also have the mana to tap and with the reduced cost we'll play Uncanny Speed on Feather and give it plus three plus zero. Um, we just need to decide who we want to hit for a lot of damage. Six, six commander damage. Um, let's see, since we're attacking. Okay. Slivers aren't doing too well on mana. We have a little bit of time before the first sliver gets out. And we can do stuff with... We can do shenanigans with Sunforger if we decide to do that. Um, let me think about this. Animar is kind of deadly. They Animar has a lot of mana. They have all their colors already. They have a full grip. They could just spit out their entire hand next turn. We don't know yet. So that seems pretty dangerous. Pretty threatening, more so than Smothering Tithe, which is pretty much all that Dacon has. Dacon is coming out the next turn, though, They, but they're only hitting for, like, four damage, so... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this turn. We'll hit the Animar deck for six damage, and let me... Go ahead and do um, life totals. Yeah, let's show that, see how it shows up. Yeah, that's good. Um, although we want to bring it out to over here. Yeah, that looks, that looks a little sharper. Get that showing up on the screen a little bit. That's where we're at. And yeah, I'll go ahead and close it off so we can keep looking so yeah that means at the end of turn we're getting get back that uncanny speed 
Um, do you know the Do you know the trick with Sunforger and we, and Feather? Have you seen it happen before? I don't know how familiar we, how quite how familiar you are. Um, you definitely seem like you probably already know, but it's such a weird. It uses weird cards that I I had to be told. I didn't even I didn't catch on to it either. It took me a while to to realize what was going on with that. Um, let's see. So, oh, evolutionary escalation. Jeez. Okay, well, we can't do that and the other stuff we want to do this turn, I think. No, maybe we can. Let's see. If we do that... Yeah, we can actually do both this turn. So, which one do we want to do first? Hmm. It's a sea of Simic. Well... <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me see about this. And let me bring it up onto the screen to show you the card. I, I somehow magically remembered the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Magnetic Theft. So, you can use Sunforger to look up Magnetic Theft, and then Magnetic Theft reattaches Sunforger back onto Feather, and because it's targeting Feather, then it goes into exile and returns back to your hand. So, for two red and a white... You search up any red or white instant from your deck and cast it. <laughs> and you can do that every single turn that you have the mana for it anyway. Which was what made Paradox Engine so bananas with Feather. Because if you had the, you know, like if you had some artifact mana out, then you do, you do Magnetic Theft on every player's turn and you get a new... You, <laughs> You basically draw three or tutor up three cards every turn, and all of them are good for Feather. <laughs> like I said, it used to be like stuff. Feather with Paradox Engine actually did used to be like a really strong deck, but it, it's kind of turned down a little bit. And that's not, that doesn't mean that it was like ultra competitive or something you know like not cdh but just like a step down or two you know just like a little bit before that before you get there uh i'm i've seen some feather decks that are stacks built that are probably more consistent and probably didn't suffer as bad from paradox engine leaving but okay so Hmm, 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 hmm. Let me think. Oh, and another treasure, because we're not paying for that either, because we have our own things to do. In fact, I think what we go ahead and do is we pay three mana, green, green, blue, to mutate this on top. So, the question here is, we cast a creature spell, so Animar's getting... A plus one plus encounter no matter what. But the question is, are we getting to mutate on top of that? So, we do have an answer that we could use. We don't want him to destroy the Smothering Tithe, but it means getting rid of Jace the Mind Sculptor. And do we have any other card draw in our hand? He also gets rid of Sword of Fire and Ice, and he can block indefinitely against us because of that because i mean the uh protection from white and black makes it really difficult for us to get through with um dak and black blade i'm wondering if at this point it's not smarter to go ahead and let him destroy the smothering tithe because i think that's what he's going to target too much mana is bad smother sun forger is probably next and 
if he had picked Sunforger, then maybe we would have been okay with him doing that. Letting it go, but I think... Yeah, let's go ahead and let it go. So they're going to destroy Smothering Tithe. And then we are going to cast Evolutionary Excavation. Escalation, I should say. Which is going to be crazy too. Let's see. So we have a 5-5 five, five, trample, re reach, mutate, thingy, mabopper, monster here. So who do we attack? I think since we got rid of the Smothering Tithe, that is less of a concern. So Feather is our next concern. So we're going to go ahead and attack Feather because the Slivers are still behind. <laughs> um, and plus five. Yeah, so this is where we're at now. 40, 34, 32, 37. Okay, so, and we do have Trigun Predator in our hand, so we do have the ability to get rid of Sunforger in a following turn, just not this turn. I think that Evolutionary Escalation is more important than Trigun Predator because it means that we essentially start getting free mana from it by putting more counters on our Animar monster, or I should say our Angurious Armored Killer. Um... So yeah, we get more counters on that, uh, giving us free creatures and also probably putting us far in advance of anybody being able to do anything against us. So I think that makes the most sense. Come on, Slivers, don't fall behind here. We got three other players at the table doing good. We need you to do good too. You can't be sitting on your hands and Pretending you don't exist. You exist. You have to play here. I was expecting good things from you. <laughs> okay, so... Let's see. Bone Scythe, is, Bone Scythe Sliver is not doing us all that great. Um, Not yet, anyway. We need more power, so let's go ahead and Muscle Sliver. Oh, man, it's unfortunate. We're, we're almost set up to be kind of bananas because we do have Hibernation Sliver in our hand. So with the first Sliver out, that gets into some crazy Cascade shenanigans, but we're not there yet. Oh, wait. So I guess at this point, maybe we go ahead and split our attacks. Dacon isn't doing too much against us, so we're going to split our attacks between the other two players at the table because we need to keep getting them down as best we can. So wing over and the movie monsters deck. Okay. Pass. Pass, pass, pass. Hmm. I do feel like we're not quite as bright right now, but I think we're still okay. Let me see. Good. Just a little bit more light. That's uh, maybe a little too much. Well, on this, it's kind of not. It's now we're getting a glare. That's not good. Are we reflecting off of our? Ah, uh, it's okay, that's okay. There's a little bit of a glare on these, but that's because they're double-sleeved, so kind of makes sense that that's what would happen. So draw, render silent. Okay, hmm. Interesting. Let's go ahead and marsh flats. Because we need the land, and... Oh, interesting. Um, I think it does make sense to go ahead and we'll get rid of the Marsh Flats for... Let's see, what do we need? We need double blue, so we need to get we need to get a land that's blue. Oh, look at there. That's the Underground Sea that I was thinking about getting. Okay.
Underground C. Thank you for showing your face. We were looking for you. Oh, and I need to take off a life. So, oh wait, no, we need six mana. Hmm. So we do need to get rid of a treasure here to be able to get Dacon out. But I think it is important that we get Dacon. So that the Sword of Fire and Ice will help us contain some stuff if we if we need to and it also will start drawing us extra cards which will be really really good but now at least we have another card we can do force of will without um losing our jason mind sculptor so that's that's good i'm glad about that let's see yeah okay so we cast dac on we need to take off a life for the Marsh Flats and pass. Pass to the next person. So, untap, draw a card. Dousing Dagger, that's also good. Let's see. Actually, I guess we could. No, wait, because we can't. Well, let's see. We have Dwarven Runes. We can. No, because we have to equip the Sunforger and then unequip it to be able to do anything. But it is a lot of mana, unfortunately. I kind of think that the Dowsing Dagger would be really good so that we can get the extra mana real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. I know that puts off the Sunforger one turn, but we desperately need some mana here. So we're going to play Dowsing Dagger. We will give the... Yeah, the plant creatures. Let's draw some plant creatures. Plant... Zero to plant. Defender. Um, give me a second. I've I've <laughs> I've a funny drawing to to do for this. Give, wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, that's the, uh... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, actually, that's not quite right. <laughs> um, I'm drawing somebody in particular, but I don't expect that. Oh gosh. This is going to be kind of awful looking, so don't be, don't, don't judge too much. <laughs> Let's see, how do we do his hair? His hair is kind of up to here. Okay, that's... That's going to be as good as I can do right now. <laughs> this is supposed to be Mr. Green from Clue because he's a 
He's a, an agent. So he's a plant. Because he's like undercover. <laughs> I need to do. <laughs> oh, I'm doing it off of a picture off of the internet really, really quickly. So, like I said, don't judge too harshly. <laughs> um, two plants. We equip with feather. Plus two, plus one. And we are going to swing for, let's see, five damage. So, I think... Yeah, at this point, we're looking at Animar's the only one who's, like, gaining any ground on anything at all. Like, he's, Animar's the only one dealing damage. I'm trying to think of... Dakon will start being really aggressive here shortly. So I think maybe he's next, but I kind of feel like it's important to focus all of my energy on one player. Thank you, Cuckoo Glock. So we will do another five damage over at the movie monsters. So that brings them up to 11. So then the second main phase, well, after we deal that damage, we get a transformed um, dousing dagger. So now we get three extra mana so we can do something with that mana if we want to. The question is, what do we want to do? And I'm kind of wondering let me think about this. We unfortunately can't do Sunforger because it only taps for it taps for three color three man of one color. So pretty much all we can really really do is gutter snipe. Maybe we do gutter snipe here. Maybe that sets us up. Okay, so we have one mana floating, so we could do something else, but I I don't... Oh, wait, no, yeah, so we do have one mana left over because of Ruby Medallion. So that was two mana from here. We have one left over. We can cast Uncanny Speed so that it returns back to our hand, and we deal two damage to each other player. That seems pretty good, and uncanny speed back to our hand. Okay. I think that was a productive turn. We got three ma three additional mana in a red-white deck. <laughs> that seems pretty good. But Animar, wait, not too far. Okay, so Animar goes. Untap, draw. No, wait, we need to do upkeep. So what do we put three plus one plus one counters on? Um, so this will go to four, and we will put three plus and plus encounters on one of, on our Mr. Green plant over there. <laughs> I don't think that'll hurt us later at all. At least I'm crossing my fingers that it doesn't. So let's draw a card. Mountain. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's not what we like to see. Okay, so let's do one, two, and we will cast Trigon Predator. So the question is... Is Dakon upset by that? And I think so, because that's the only thing really allowing him to hold on too much. We could... Yeah, because we can't kill it with the Sword of Fire and Ice. Um, we really can't kill almost anything with Sword of Fire and Ice at this, at this juncture. Just pretty much just Gutter Snipe. Hmm... Or a plant. <laughs> um, do we counter it? Do we counter it? Do we counter it? Okay, so if we don't counter it, Trigon Predator could attack us and eliminate the other artifacts and enchantments that we have. And we're pretty heavy on artifacts and enchantments. But Trigon Predator could also destroy the Sunforger, which would be important for us to be able to gain ground against Feather. If we do take it out, then we for sure guarantee that, but we could be premature in that since the Feather deck is consistently attacking the Animar deck. And sort of presumably the... 
And then this goes up to five because we cast a spell. Um, cast a creature spell, I should say. So. Hmm. That's a tricky question. They're not doing anything necessarily directly directly at me. But we really don't have any other means to take out the Trigon Predator. Um, let's go ahead and Force of Will. We don't know what else the Animar deck has in their hand. And our only means of getting past, getting through this is by preventing them from destroying all of our stuff. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and lose a life and exile a card. Okay, so what next? Uh, we don't have much else. We do need more cards, so we're going to... Get on another creature so that our shamanic revelation actually does something later on. <laughs> um, so we are going to Mecha Godzilla Battle Fortress for X equals three. That seems good. And that puts Animar up by one. So it is now dealing 10 commander damage, even better. So, hmm, what do we do? Feather could absolutely destroy us next turn by being able to equip the Sunforger. So, let's think about this. How much damage can Feather do? Because they're going to be able to get out... They're going... Let's see. 3 plus 4... Seven, they have a card in hand to do 10, so they actually do already have all of the damage that they... all They have the capability of killing us next turn because we've already taken 11 commander damage. Yeah, we've already taken 11 commander damage. Oh, that's unfortunate. And we can't deal enough damage to them directly, but we kind of have no choice here because we can't do much of anything else. We didn't have enough mana for Shamanic Revelation. So I think we just go ahead and attack with Animar here. 10 damage towards Feather. So the question is, does Feather block to absorb two of the damage? Because we are trampling. Um... Mm, oh, uh, yes, we do, because the Sword of Fire and Ice actually allows the DAC on deck, the only one we're really concerned about right now. We can't use, we're not going to be able to use Gutter Snipe to be able to block it, and he's going to kill it anyway, so I think it's okay for us to go ahead and lose the Gutter Snipe right here and only take 8 damage. Uh, actually, let's do this, then minus two, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, well, that's kind of how it goes. Bye, Animar, you're about to be toast. You tried, you did not have, like, seven creatures in your hand to just play it all in a single turn. <laughs> okay, untap... We have lots of plants, though. That's good. Draw a card. Another land. Hey, there's a land. I mean, it gets us one step closer. We're almost there. But unfortunately, it's still not really doing enough for us. So tap that. And bone sliver, scythe. Bone scythe sliver. Cheese. 
Hmm, who do we attack? We at least have double strike now, but that's not... Um, maybe this is where we attack Feather? It seems weird, but... Well, actually, let's just hold off. I don't know that there's a good attack here, because we want... We don't want to help Dakon necessarily take out Feather too quickly. We really do want to be able to kill off Dakon, because he's the one that's looking really sus right now. Actually having the mana to get stuff out. Oh wait, this is switched. This is flip-flopped. That goes in the graveyard. That goes into exile. Okay. Untap. Draw a card. Urborg! Hey, look at that. Let's go and play Urborg. Which conveniently also helps out the Sliver deck unknowingly. I, I would be... I would consider not playing it, but... Let's see here. Two mana to equip. Three mana to play. And three mana to play. Two more to equip the Helm of Cultra. So I think that does actually allow us to do. We'll equip and we'll use our last treasure to be able to play and equip the Helm of Cultra. So now we have a really beefy guy here. And we couldn't do that without playing Urborg, so. Yeah, Mr. Mr. B. Here's a, I, I managed to get this signed, this um, from, the, from the realms, or from the vault realms foil Urborg signed by the, by the artist. I was quite pleased with that opportunity. <laughs> Okay, so we do have six land. Actually, we should probably separate these lands out. We have six land. So he is an 8-8 eight, eight with protection from red and blue and has first strike, trample, and haste. So we do want to attack with him because we draw a card from Sword of Fire and Ice, but we can't target any of the slivers, but we could target the other plant over there. So maybe that's what we do. I mean, I think I want to leave Feather and Animar to duke it out one more turn. So let's go ahead and go after the Sliver deck. So let's see. It's when we deal combat damage to a player. So they have to block for us to be able to get that. Oh, wait, I guess does that... Ooh, that's actually not good because they might... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they actually, well, they can't block with two of the slivers. So, but they do have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they actually do have enough damage to kill Dak on this turn. So that's not good. What are we looking at life total wise? Maybe we also just don't do anything this turn. I mean, we do want to draw a card, but I'm trying to see... I don't think that there is a necessarily favorable attack this turn. Especially since it seemed like Dakin's presence stopped the Sliver deck from attacking us. I think that we let the Feather deck take out um, the Anwar deck, and then with Dakon, we take out Feather next turn. I mean, not necessarily take out, but we actually, we deal a lot of damage to them, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. So, Feather, draw a card. Planes, that is perfectly alright with me. Let's go ahead and equip the Sunforger. So, let's de-equip the Sunforger in order to search our library for a red or white instant spell Converted mana costs four or less. So there's only one that we're going for, and that is. Where is. Where where are you? I know you're here. So we're going to do magnetic theft, which is going to reattach. Actually, so do we want to. It's going to reattach and then exile. 
the Sunforger, which means that we can re-unequip the Sunforger. Is there, let's see. We can, I think we may still be able to deal the damage that we want to deal. Maybe? Let me think about this. Because we need to deal the 10 damage. So I guess, yeah, we're going to have to hold off this turn. We're not going to do it a second time. We're just going to use this turn to... Well, can we? Oh, man, that's... If we get rid of the Dwarf Ruins, we can get a double strike effect... That will allow us to... Yeah, maybe we do that. Maybe we have to get rid of... Maybe we get rid of Dwarven f Ruins here. So let's go and get rid of it. Add, adding two red mana to our mana pool. We'll add another red mana. Let's see. So this unequips again. But then... So the red and white that we have grabs another card. And we do Uncanny Speed, which will exile. There we go. So now we just have to find a double strike spell in our inventoire. Let's see here. And that means we should be able to start one-shotting people next turn. So yeah, we will go ahead and Timur Battle Rage. So that will be 12 commander damage over to Animar, who would absolutely kill us next turn if they could get over here and not be dead. There. And that will exile as well. Okay, and that actually does leave us with mana if we need to we can Apostle's Blessing from our hand and protect Feather if we need to. So these are going to return to our hand. And Animar is deado. Let's see. Um, 12 damage. Yeah, he's dead. This was supposed to be plus one. This is plus one. Okay. Sliver in time. Sliver time. Man, Animar didn't didn't do necessarily poorly, just maybe one too many lands drawn, basically. And we were still gonna draw more lands. See, if we'd gotten more of this, <laughs> that would have been a lot better than the like three lands that we drew. So it was just a uh, kind of bad luck on that on that particular shuffle. And let's see if we I think maybe we're <laughs> we may actually be pretty close to it to, to the end and we can do a second game. Um, because we're only an hour in, yeah, so let's go ahead and untap, draw a card. Lancer sliver, nice. Okay, so here we go. We have five mana because this does blue-green. This is a black now because of the Urborg, white and red. We're going to cast the first sliver. And now we definitely have something to take on DAC. No way, we can't block with that one. So we... Eef, eef. But we do start getting... Cascade. No, wait. We do ca get Cascade from this first sliver. So, yeah, when we cast this, exile cards from the top of your library. So, until we do one that's less, Magma Sliver. <laughs> this goes on to the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, when you cast the spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card. So, my Sliver spell has Cascade as well, so now three or less. Oh yeah, there we go. So, Spirit of Resistance. If you control a permanent of each color, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. 
Oh, 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 that's that's oh, that's not so good for the. Uh, that is not so good for Dacon. Dacon is now not getting through this deck. I don't think because we will first. I think we first strike him to death. Let me think. Oh wait, does the the shield of Caldera may give it first strike as well, but. Oof, that's harsh. Because we magma silver plus double strike is going to be really good. And we almost have all of the colors without having the first sliver anyway. So that's also a kind of... We don't even have to block, I guess. So let's see. Dacon is still out. He can still do stuff. Do we attack? Feather is tapped. Let's see. Yeah. So Dacon does have first strike. So let me think about this. Dacon, well, yeah, Dacon is the deck that we want to take out, but we don't have a good way to actually take him out right this second. We do still need some other cards. Hmm. Really, we need the hive sliver. If we can get the 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 sliver, oh, hide hi, hive lord. That's what we need. Sliver hive lord. If we can get that out, that will be very very dangerous. Hmm. Let me think about this. Do we try to sacrifice a sliver to kill Dakon? Because I think Feather... Feather just needs... Well, wait, because Feather can tutor... Eww, that's not good. Feather can tutor cards. So they could tutor up an instant or sorcery that... Uh, an instant, a white instant that destroys an artifact or enchantment which gets rid of our spirit of resistance. That's bad. So we actually do have some incentive to do something about that. So I think that maybe it means... Now, Dakin could also do that, too. We don't know what they have. But I do think it means we, while we have a shot here... No, wait, they have Defender. They're just a plant. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to attack with all of the creatures that we can attack with. So it's four, six, um, 14... It's at, well, so 4, 10, 14, and 18 damage. So that's not quite enough, but we don't have haste, so we can't do much more than that. 18 damage. So Wingover is very close to dying. He, they're at 6 life. So let's hope that at least we get one solid turn with the Spirit of Resistance, because although, I, I mean, it doesn't really matter... I don't think... Mm. Okay, so let's just see how it goes. So untap, draw a card. Sword of Feast and Famine! <laughs> um, I mean, that doesn't help us technically destroy anything, but it does mean that we can get through all of the creatures that are out, essentially. <laughs> um... Actually, so let me think about this. We can't deal damage yet, so we do need to draw cards to do that. Do we... Hmm... 
the sword and feast of famine and the sword of fire and ice would go on the stack at the same time so we don't have enough mana to get through the diffusion sliver and also this stuff to be able to play the sword of feast and famine let me think about this um I think maybe let's go ahead and do it. We will sort of feast and famine, and we will use that to attack into no way because we do need a blocker for that sliver hive lord. We need to untap. Uh, okay, so no, that's not the correct play. We need to do instead these two and these two for Jace the Mind Sculptor. We need to see what's on the top of our library. So let's go ahead and three loyalty, we will brainstorm. Oh my gosh, so we do. Want most of these, let's go and put that there. We'll play Maze of Ith. We have Demonic Tutor. Oh wait, do we want do we want Sword and Feast of Famine? Yeah, I think we want it over Vargoth, Blood Blood Sky Age Sire, because we're going to two for Demonic Tutor, and we'll, we're going to go and find a card that deals with this insanity over on the other side. Oh, I I know what it is. I think that we get that card. Because that will get Spirit of Resistance off. And well, actually, do we just Wrath to get rid of everything? Because we need to at least untap. The problem is that Magma Sliver basically means they can annihilate somebody with the first sliver so that's no good but we can untap a no wait we need to pay mana with an ability for maze of ith okay so we can't attack this turn we have to have a blocker up but that does mean that we get a wrath effect so that hopefully hopefully they don't have something that regenerates or not i guess we we have no we have no idea what they're going to do but we can get damnation at least and destroy all their creatures because they do not have anything that does that. So yeah, we'll have to leave Feather open and available to maybe kill us next turn. And this is probably where I would be like, hey, don't kill me. I need to des destroy those slivers. <laughs> you, need, you need to not destroy me because that's just how it is. But the Feather deck, though... Well, the Feather deck, actually, let's see. That is an interesting question. Normally, I would get the Cyclonic Rift here, but I don't think it's good enough for what we're trying to do. If we kill the Slivers... <laughs> it's simple. We just kill the Slivers. Um, let's see. So we can, though, prevent... Maybe... I guess this does mean that we prevent Feather from killing us with Maze of Ith. Okay, so I think that's a game plan. We Maze of Ith, Feather, we block first Sliver... And then we um, Wrath next turn. And hopefully we can get out Dakin again and start making a mess of people. Okay. Untap. Draw. Soul's Fire. <laughs> that seems pretty good. Um... We are going to tap one Magnetic Theft and put Sunforger onto Feather. Then it exiles. 
Um, hmm. So, yeah, we do need to destroy the Spirit of Resistance. We can't do anything about the Maze of Ith quite yet. But we maybe we can figure out something about that. Or maybe we just hang on. What do we have? I feel like we do have something in our deck that may give us protection from from that card, but I'm going to have to do a quick little look up here. Indestructible, Karen, no. Protection from the color of your choice. Hmm. Ooh, that's that's rough. Maze of Ith really screws me. But I really don't like the <laughs> I don't, the the spirit of resistance is really bad too. But if the creatures are gone, then we're okay. Let me think about this. Is there a way to do our mana a little bit differently? Because we do want red mana to be able to... Yeah, we're not going to cast this. We're going to tap three with our lost fail. And that's how we're going to equip Sunforger. Because then that allows us to still use Sunforger on an opposing turn. And do we have too many cards in hand? That's a good question. No, we do not. So, is there anything else we want to do this turn? No, I think that's it. I get... well... Huh. Is that it? Is that how we want to do this? That's... That sliver deck could destroy us this turn. But we could use protection. Yeah, let's do it like this. This is what we're doing. Oh. Animar deck. We need to keep going around. <laughs> we need to get back over to the slivers. Now, it could not matter, depending upon what we draw and what we cascade into, because it, we're, like, on the verge of insanity. I mean, we're already at insanity here with the slivers, but we could get even further down that path. Okay, draw a card. Strip mine. That can tap for mana. Um... Yeah, they can't do Maze of Ith. Let me think about this. I think it's smart to... Let's see, we want blue. So actually, let's activate this for... <laughs> blue and green. <laughs> um... We will activate that for blue and green, and that for black. So we have <laughs> a green mana floating. <laughs> but we still are able to, to use white. So let's do hibernation sliver, because that seems like a smart move. So now we need one or less. <laughs> Slivers. Mm 
I know that there's one costing slivers in here. I think that there should be more than striking sliver, but I guess we'll find out. Oh, flying would have been so nice. Oh, burgeoning is what we're going to run into. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's see. And it's random order. Okay. I was thinking it was random order. I remember shuffling, but just to be sure. Burgeoning doesn't help us, but Hibernation Sliver definitely does. So let's do that. We have a green floating. Let's go ahead and one, two, three. That one being white, we will cast the Lancer Sliver so that we cascade for two or less. Do, do, do. Two or less predatory sliver, so now they're even stronger, and these go on bottom in random order. Okay, so now the question is, do we get rid of the Maze of Ith? Kind of seems like maybe we should. We don't know what they got with, with the Demonic Tutor, but I think we're going to go ahead and think that whatever it is, it's going to be okay. We'll go and get rid of the Maze of Ith, which puts them even in a pretty tough position here. Let's see, how do we do this? These are the ones I can't attack. They have protection from blue and green, so they do block the first sliver, I guess. Hmm. How much health are we looking at? How much does that DAC on deck have? Okay, so they have a decent amount. So what would happen if we attacked with all of these against the deck on deck? They could block the magma sliver. That deals the most damage because it's at five currently. Let me think about this. All slivers have taps, so they needed haste to be able to do anything. So really it's just the first sliver that allows us to do much of anything. Let's see, but we are still dealing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, twenty-six. Oh man, I think that's enough to kill to kill them. They're tapped out. They can't unless they had uh, one of the command cards that as long as you have a commander out, you can do something. We I think because let's see, let, let me say that again. One, two, three, four, five. Thirteen. So twenty-six by themselves, but then we can give them another plus 16, 26, 16, 42. That's enough to kill Dak and Blackblade. So that's what we're going to do, which means that Dakon will block the Magma Sliver to try to kill it, but we're going to pay a life and return the, return the Magma Sliver back to our hand with Hibernation Sliver. Wow. 
Let me do that right again. So, wait, no. So 13, but then we do 1, 2, 3, no, wait. Twenty-six, and then another sixteen because we tap the first sliver to give something plus eight plus zero, but that gets doubled, so it's no, it's plus nine, so it's eighteen. Another eighteen, so one two three, one two three. Yeah, Dak on, buddy, pal, your toast, I think. Ouch. So we are at slivers and <laughs> we're, we're at slivers and a deck that can one shot if they can get rid of if they can do something to get rid of spirit of resistance because they have literally one turn to do that. Because I think pretty much yeah, the sliver deck is going to do exactly the same thing. So yeah, let's go and pick this stuff up. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so that means at the end of turn, Feather is going to tap two and unequip the Sunforger to see what happens because we need, we need a miracle here. We need something that destroys Artifacts and enchantments, pretty much. Stand firm, test of faith. Because it is prevent all... Yeah, prevent all damage. So we do definitely need something. Had I somehow missed just putting in, like, literally one destroy something card? Maybe I need something that prevents damage. Okay, so we're going to look for destroy something, and if we can't find it... We're going to look for something that makes it so damage can't be prevented. Which I don't think we have either. I think we may be screwed here. Although, actually... No, because they have the hibernation sliver out. Crap. Mmm, that is very unfortunate. I think we might be out of luck here. I think we we made a tactical error. We did not include some cards that might have maybe possibly needed to be included. Yeah, I'm looking. I don't see anything, unfortunately. I think that's it. We have to forfeit because we can't do, we don't have a way to get rid of the, <laughs> the spirit of resistance. Oh, that's so good. Okay, well, I think I still made good decisions here. Um, I think I'm going to go to a break screen momentarily while I reset this up. And we will start a second game. So hang on to your horses. We will be right back.
Okay, we're almost there. We're almost reset up. I'm shuffling the last deck. We're going to do this all over again, all the same decks, but I've rearranged them so that we're going in whoever lost goes first, and then whoever lost second goes third, second, and so on until we go back down. So our new order instead before we had Dacon, Feather, Animar, then Slivers, we're going to do Animar, Dacon, Feather, and then Slivers. <laughs> Slivers went last, and they won, so they get to go last again as a reward. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's see if we can get a good hand on the first pull. If I could get a mana sliver in the first hand, in the opening hand, that would be perfect. And the ability to cast it, I should say that too. Ick. It's icky. Oh, well, I, well, yeah, um, I mean, this, this gets us a lot of the colors that we need at least. And Farseek gets us another land that will have some other colors in it. Um, I guess that works well enough. I mean, it's not great, but at least we'll be able to do... We'll definitely be able to do Anguished Unmaking if we need to, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and take that and see what happens with it. We'll go with it. Animar had a s similarly kind of... Uh, maybe... Maybe it's okay. Sorry, I was resetting all of the players real quick. Let's see. Yeah, that doesn't look right. We need to scroll down up. I mean, just a teeny bitty, bitty bitty bit. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so let's go. Let's go! Who's gonna win? Who's going to win? Draw Song of Creation. Whoo! A, a, a lot of the times I am able to get this card are the games that I end up winning. So let's find out if that remains true because we definitely have the land to be able to play it. Um, yeah, let me think about this. Ha, ham, heem, ham, hoom, hom, heem. So, I guess here, and we will get out the Essence Symbiote, I guess, probably, next turn. Oh, uh, we'll think about that. Okay, let's keep going. Let's not dilly-dally. Make quick decisions and go. Watery Grave, that's great. That's actually what we needed, because we're starting on a very low, <laughs> low mana, or, yeah, low mana hand. But we did start with two cards that turn into um, lands if we need to. So that was kind of my point. We are going to go and lose two life. We'll brainstorm. Draw three. Put two back. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> polluted, polluted delta. Wow. Okay, so I do think that... Let me think about this. Because this turns into a blue mana. We need double blue. I don't know that we really want this one. So we're going to put that one on top first. And the one that we're drawing, we'll go ahead and put as Lightning Greaves for now. Because it doesn't... We're going to... We're definitely going to draw that next turn. And maybe Demonic Tutor for a Soul Ring, I think. I think that makes the most sense. Because we can actually get to casting Dakon really, really quickly that way. Oh, and we were supposed to start the game with Leyline of the Void. I almost missed that. That is what we want to do because that's going to that that could really hurt some some people at this table. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. So feather does doesn't af get affected by that, but let's go ahead and draw. That is not a card that we necessarily wanted to see for sure. Because we are also low on mana, we're going to Mountain and we will Chrome Mox getting rid of... We need to get rid of... Um, 
in your hand from the game. Okay, so we are going to get rid of Martial Glory so that we can get both white and red mana from that. And we will tap two and get uh, Firebrand Archer out so that we can start capitalizing on that. Um, and this is this is kind of hoping that maybe in the next card we draw planes. I'm really hoping that we draw planes. <laughs> furious kitty cat. Not really furious. She just like likes to make noise. Okay, so Sliver's turn. Planes. That's good to see. That is good to see. Now we can far seek for the last remaining mana that we needed. Let's we need to be able to far seek though, so we will do the woodland cemetery into play tapped so that we can do that next turn. Um, and with Animar, Animar is going to Domri Raid. That's not too bad. We will put that into our hand. So now the question is, do we play the Essence Symbiote now, or do we hold off on it? Um, I think maybe we hold off on it. Let's go and do Wooded Foothills, and I guess I'll go ahead and pay the mana here. Oh, actually, or the life here. So Ancient Sword lost two life, and we lost one life. Okay. Because we want to get a good land. We want to get Taiga here. We will have Ancient Ziggurat to deal with the, the next turn to be able to cast Animar. And I guess I mean Song of Creation will take just a tiny bit of time to get out. But because we will need the Gruul turf to be able to do it. Um, which means returning a land, and probably it means returning uh, means returning Ancient Ziggurat to our hand, I would think. Okay. Cut. And pass. Because we do not, we don't have anything else. Yeah, we don't have any ramp or anything, so that's all we're going to do. On to Dakon. Oh, and this is exiled, actually. I need to actually pay attention to that. Draw Lightning Greaves. We knew that that was coming up. Um, we kind of want to get rid of the card that's on top of our library, and we do want to get... Let's see. So... Let me think about this. Polluted Delta. Let's go ahead and lose a life. We'll get a land. Let me go and make sure I mark that first. Okay. So let's get a land. We will get... Actually, let's see about this. Yeah, so we have the white-black. So I think the white-blue land is what we want to get here. We have to find it first, of course. <laughs> I know you're in here. Well, wait, I thought I knew you were. Yeah, there you go. Our Italian tundra. I was like, I, I remember putting all of the dual, the OG dual lands for these for this color combination into this deck. Oh, why am I shuffling? Because we're just going to Demonic Tutor into Soul Ring, because that's always the smart move. Soul Ring. There you go. That's what we like to see. Now we will finish shuffling. Come and do the 
this. And that is the end of our turn. I know they kind of got rid of both of our shuffle effects, but or two different shuffle effects, but it'll be okay. Okay, untap, draw planes. No, it's not. Okay. We will figure that out. Um, I think that we... We want to attack... I think we attack the... The cuckoo clock is what we attack. <laughs> um, no, we want to attack something. Let's think about this. The Silvers are way far away from doing anything. Um, Leyline of the Void is kind of annoying. But Animar seems like it's always going to be the more immediate trouble. So let's go ahead and battle-wise Valor. So that we can at least get the Scry 1. And we want to put this on the bottom. That's a really good card, but we need, we need, 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 need a land here. We need to land immediately. So... That was a good choice. Unfortunately, it gets exiled, is what I should do. It gets permanently exiled. Okay. That's all we can do this turn. So that means four damage at the Animar deck is what's happening there. Okay. Pass the turn. Because Animar's coming out next turn. Oh, wait. And we cast a non creature spell. So we actually dealt another damage, to, or we dealt one damage to each other deck. Wow. <laughs> Animar's at 34 life already. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go untap draw another land. Huh, interesting. Let's do a planes and we will far seek for. Yeah, I think that's what we want to do. We want to far seek for some kind of mountain. Because red mana is the only thing that we're missing. And I think that we have... Man, Murmuring Boss would have been good, but that's all of... That's like the colors that we have over and over again. Hmm... I mean, Steam Vent seems like maybe a good choice. So we have more blue is what I'm thinking. But I do really like, I, I think the color green is going to be really important. It seems like it's always some amount of important. So let's see if we have a, a red green card in here. Okay, we do have Cinder Glade, so let's go ahead and do that. It comes into play tapped. One step closer to first sliver coming out. Turn four first sliver isn't too bad. It could obviously be even faster if you're really making a dedicated combo deck, but I think pretty much the combo deck with First Sliver is Food Chain. I think you just Food Chain. Okay. Which, I do have a Food Chain somewhere, but I don't remember what deck it wormed its way into. So back to Animar, who went first before. Oh, and that Farsi goes into the graveyard. Okay, so... Draw Impulse, but we really just want Animar. And we don't have anything else to do this turn, so we are going to pass. Passity, pass, 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 pass. Dacon is going to get Smothering Tithe, because of course they're going to get Smothering Tithe. Holy cow. Okay, so that means... We do want to take two damage with... The Godless Shrine, and then we... I'm glad that we did the Tundra. So, because that means that we Soul Ring and then Smothering Tithe. Yikes. 
Yikes, yikes. That's going to be a lot of mana here shortly. Because nobody's going to be able to really pay for it. So we did take two more damage. Hey, look, we're matching we're matching the Animorn deck in life. Okay. So, yeah, I think that we draw a card and then the trigger goes off. So we get to decide if it's a land, if we want to pay or not. So we will draw a card. It's not a land. So I think that... Man, I don't really want to, but we don't have enough land to cast wing over i mean well feather so we're going to go ahead and pay to stop the treasure from happening um and then we're going to go ahead and attack dacon for two <laughs> okay so slivers do the slivers pay for this untap draw card necrotic sliver um Let's see, looking at my hand, what can I play? Is there something I want to play? Um, I'm going to let them get one treasure. Because, and I say this lovingly here, screw that. <laughs> screw that noise. We are going to anguished unmaking the, <laughs> the smothering tithe. <laughs> it is Dunzo. Exiled. Gone forever. These are both exiled as well. Yeah, and we lose three life for that. That's okay. No more Smothering Tithe, because that sucks the fun out of everything. <laughs> and we can't use it against Animar. That's really what it is. That's what it comes down to, is Animar. <laughs> okay, untap. Draw a card. Ranging Raptors seems like a good card. Um, let's see, interesting. So if we do one, two, three, we can play Ranging Raptors, which, well, actually, let's see. Yeah, let's go and do that. So Animar, we're going to return this and Gruel Turf there. And I will pass the... No, wait, I can attack with, with this. So, who do I attack? Dacon is still kind of scary-ish, but we now are less worried about things. So, I think that we attack and deal two damage against... We could do it against our long-term nemesis, the Feather deck. <laughs> long-term meaning literally one other game. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. But the slivers are one land away, so let's go ahead and deal two damage to the sliver deck. And I need to rearrange this a little bit. Slivers are two damage against from movie monsters. Let's take a look at that real quick. So you can see that's what we're that's what our life totals look like right now. Um, yeah. So that is all we're going to do for this particular turn. Let's see. Dacon is going to untap, draw a card, counterspell. Well, that would have been convenient some other turn. Okay. I think we want to get, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. So that is enough mana to cast Dacon. Let's go ahead and do that. He's only a three, three, but that's okay. Um, actually, I guess, um, Let me think about this. We do have Salundi Vision that we could use as a land, but it also could be used to get us an instant or sorcery, which sounds like it might be more important to us. Hmm. 
but we do want to be able to use Dacon to block Elspeth Knight Errant. So maybe we hang out a turn on not using anything. We'll just sit with a 3-3 and it'll be okay. There's not much else out there right now. We wouldn't... It seems unlikely that we'd be able to do anything against Animar anyway. So untap, draw, let's see. Heather Flux Reservoir. That would be awesome, but we need... We need land is what we need. Um, I don't really want to use, because we have Fist of Flames in our hand, but I'm really, I'm loathe to use it because it draws us cards and we can keep drawing cards using it when we have Feather out. So I don't, I think we just hold off and see what happens. I, I guess maybe we're going to be the slow deck this, this game. Slippers go, draw, <laughs> Sliver Overlord. <laughs> Because, yes. Okay, so what lands do we have? This is blue, green, white, red. We need black. Here's a swamp. That's the five colors we need to be able to cast first sliver. Let's go and do that. He has cascade, so he four or less. We get root sliver. Slivers can't be countered. Wow. That's pretty go darn good. We'll get Sliver Overlord next turn, which means we'll get another big Cascade. And unfortunately, we don't have anything. We don't have the mana that we need unless we draw a, re a, a land that produces red mana that we can use to cast Striking Sliver and Sliver Overlord next turn. We're only casting one. So no haste, no nothing. We just have protection from countered. <laughs> okay, that seems pretty good, though. 7-7. Seven, seven. That means we definitely are blocking Animar, that's for sure, unless Animar goes crazy this turn. So untap, draw a card. Forgotten Ancient. That seems pretty good, though. Let's see. Let's do Ancient Ziggurat. Then we will... Let's see, we only need one red mana for this. So we're going to tap one Essence Symbiote. Like, it's a counter. Um, man, that's not quite enough to cast both the Primal Empathy and the Forgotten Ancient. Hmm. So maybe, no. We could Impulse. I think we go ahead and do 1, 2, and we do... Or do we... Hmm, interesting. Let's see. Let's do it like this. So we get the green here, but then we get the Ancient Ziggurat for Forgotten Ancient. So that goes up to three. Then we will use the floating man, the red floating mana from Gruel Turf and the island here to cast Impulse, which will give us a counter on the Forgotten Ancients. Forgotten Ancient, I should say. So we look at the top four cards of our library. Yeah, Genesis isn't going to help us anymore. I think Signal the Clans is pretty good, but I'm kind of wondering if we just get another land this turn. I don't know. Let me think about that. Actually, no, we want Signal the Clans. So this is gone. These are on the bottom. And we pass the turn, or do we attack? Let me think about this. So, Animar is a 4-4, protection from white and black. We could attack Dak on this turn. We could attack the Sliver deck. Maybe we go and attack the Sliver deck, because then that means they have to block with their Root Sliver or just take the damage. I think they go and take the damage, because Dakon is still kind of a threat here. So, Slivers are going to take four more damage. And they are at six commander damage, too. Okay. So, continuing on. Continuing over to Dakon. What are they going to draw? Could it be a land? 
and tap draw. It is a land. Hey, look at that. Okay, so we are going to play that land because we do want to be able to take use of it. I think that we Elspeth here. I think that makes sense. And we are going to go ahead and plus her up to five and create a tiny little soldiery dude. So let's see. Soldier. A cloak here. Um, let's give him a stick to use, a really crappy spear, let's say. And arm here. Standing. Yeah, let's do something like this. There we go, we got ourselves a little soldiery guy. Okay, so at least we have two blockers for Elspeth, and maybe we can get up to the point where Elspeth goes crazy. Um, we're not going to take a life to do Flooded Strand here, because I don't think it makes any sense to use it for anything. We don't really have anything to use it on, so we'll just hold off on that mana for now and have some blockers. Although I guess Animar doesn't mean anything. And Anim the Forgotten Ancients does get a mana there. Well, not a mana. Forgotten Ancients gets a counter. Oh my gosh, it's a freaking planes. Here we go. Yeah. Feather, you're in you're almost out of the game, but maybe you can get back into it. Man, that's Forgotten Ancients goes up one. We don't have anything else that we can do, so we're just going to pass. The Slivers, however, are going to get some more Cascades, and we will see how bananas they get. Untap, draw, land. That is, a, that I said, if, if only we could get another red source next turn, then we would be able to cast two Slivers in a turn. Hey, look at that. <laughs> okay, five mana, Sliver Overlord. Diffusion Sliver, jeez. And we are also going to cast the Striking Sliver. So then I don't think we have a zero cost card in here, but we have to check. We have to flip over every card probably in the entire deck. Because I think that we I took them all out. Now that could be wrong. There could be a, a zero cost non-land card in here. I don't know. I didn't... I, I double-checked this to make sure that it actually had good card... Like, it it was still a put-together deck <laughs> before I started tonight. Um, but I didn't check all of the cath Cascade lines. So I think one converted mana cost is the lowest we go. And I am not seeing anything yet, so that seems like a pretty good sign that there isn't a zero-cost card. Okay, I'm going to set those aside, and we're going to do this. No, wait, we need to do it like this. Don't cheat. Bad. No, che no cheating. Um, da -dum -dum. Dum, da -dum, dum. So at least we have first strike. That's always good. Okay, no, we didn't. So we just shuffle our deck, basically. So now we know for sure. If we get to this point again, we just 
shuffle the deck because we have to do the cascade. Oh, I guess. Yeah, so you have to, but you get to choose what you have to cascade, but you get to choose whether you cast a spell. So always good to re-familiarize yourself with the wording of things in case you miss something. Oh, okay, I shuffled it up good. Okay, so, first strike, pseudo shroud, not, I mean, pseudo hexproof, can't be countered, and we will get to search up slivers and put them into our hand, which is going to be super wrong and bad. Um, let's see here. It does feel like we want to attack somebody. It seems like maybe the... Maybe we attack the Animar deck. The Feather deck just got out Feather, so they're a little behind. Dacon has... Has that, but I'm not really liking that. Let's... I th well, I guess if we don't, we could just solidify our win later on by being able to Alpha Strike everybody or something something bizarre like that so maybe it makes sense to just hold off and this means that we can um hit animar where it hurts by having some first strike maybe i guess no well we don't let's see because forgotten ancients is already at six counters which means animar is going to have six counters on it we can't block with sliver overlord or the first sliver because it has protection so I think maybe we, this is a tough choice. I get, no, let's, let's hold off. Let's hold off for now. Um, untap, I don't think there's a favorable thing there. Untap, upkeep, we get to move counters. So we're going to move all of the counters from Forgotten Ancients onto Animar. Draw a card. That's not really what we went to see. Um, we have some really strong choices here. I think that we... We still have Song of Creation, but I think that what gets us even quicker is being able to tutor. So we're going to do Signal the Clans. Search for three creature cards. Choose one at random. So... I think Destroya technically makes for an interesting one. And that's because I was flying. <laughs> if that wasn't apparent, then it was it was because flying. Huh. Flying. Flying. Do we have any other flying? Because flying seems like if we just get flying out, then it makes everything go away. So that's what we're going to do. We choose one of them and shuffle the rest into our library. So before we shuffle too heavily, we have Ghidorah, King of the Cosmos, Destroya, Perfect Life Form, and Dream Heron as our flying um, things. So let's go ahead and roll. We'll do... One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. With this red die right here. Two. One, two. So yeah, that is destroy. I said one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Okay, so these two are gonna get shuffled back in, but that one goes into our hand signal. The clans goes into our 
exile because it got used. Destroya is good too. Oh, and Forgotten Ancients does get another counter. So there we go. Okay, cut. There we go. We are going to this in our hand. So we do this. We will mutate on top. So we cast a card that goes up to four. Then because of Essence Symbiote, we get to put another counter on it. We cast a spell. So ancient Forgotten Ancients gets a counter. And we gained two life from Essence Symbiote. So we are at 36. Do we have anything else in our hand that we can cast that we care about? Maybe we go ahead and cast the Mecha Godzilla. I don't think, we don't have the mana to cast anything else. So let's go ahead and do that. We will one, two, um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we will Mecha Godzilla for X equals six. Six here, one more counter here, one more counter here. We don't have mana to counter spell. That's the only problem. So we do have a counter spell in hand on the deck on side, but we can't, we don't have the mana to cast it. Okay, so Animar is now a 16 16. So I think that means that. Yeah, that means Slivers are going to get it this turn. They are going to take 16 damage. Let's go and look here. So the Slivers already have um, already have six damage from us. So if we do 16 more, they are now toast. No Slivers, no more Cascade. <laughs> Just Animal. <laughs> um... Dacon next. <laughs> um, this is a great setup for the Animar deck. Oh, that's psycho. Okay, untap, draw a card. Marsh Flats. Put that. They do not have flying this turn. Can we do something crazy now that we know that? Um, so... Dacon is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5. We can give him plus, two, plus 3, plus 3, and flying. So that would be 8 damage, but is that going to be enough to do anything? I don't think so. I think we want to... 1, 2, 3, we're going to... Salundi Vision, which will put another counter on Forgotten Ancients. We are going to look at the top 6 cards of our library and hope that there is a Wrath effect in here. 1, 2, 3, 4 five six or just something that we can use at all that is so not fair <laughs> no there's nothing there there's we actually don't get anything out of that so salundi vision is going to go into the graveyard um i think we have to attack we have to do something so these yeah in a random order so these are going to go into the bottom the black blade was in in that pile, unfortunately. So that stinks. That's a bit stinky. Oh wait, I forgot to do this. Forgot to take that away. Okay, so we are going to put Elspeth up to six, and we will. The only thing we can do is swing like that. Um, I guess this also means that we could do. We could do Lightning Greaves, but I'm not exactly sure that it really matters. And holding out the mana might be might pass a bluff test. So yeah, we're going to do this. So we deal eight damage over to the Animar deck. Uh, we cast here, they cast, and technically the Slippers cast. Okay, so. 
Animar took eight damage, and that was also commander damage. Okay. So we will pass the turn moving over to the feather deck and see if the feather deck can actually do something about this because I don't think so. Mind stone, that's not looking, that is not looking like a winning move. <laughs> now, if we could get Aetherflux Reservoir out, that would be a different pro that would be a different thing. Um, let me think about this. They don't have flying. They don't, I mean, I think the only path is doing Fist of Flame, allowing them to Forgotten Ancients to get another counter. And we draw a card, and then Feather gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So then Feather is going to swing for five damage, and also we're going to deal one damage because of the Firebrand Archer. So let's see. And they're going to lose five damage from getting attacked by Feather. They are at 22, so that's not, that's not enough damage, but I don't know that we have any choice here. So there's nothing else that we can do. We return the Fist of Flame back to our hand, and a Croa Crusader is what's going to go into our graveyard. I think that may be the card that we pull we might want to consider pulling that card. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'll have to think about what else is in the feather deck to be able to do artifact removal. I mean, artifact enchantment removal is what I should say. Okay. So, Sliver, you are done for the rest of the night for sure. You go bye-bye. Animar, buddy old pal old buddy. What nonsense are you going to do so untap upkeep we're going to move these five over to destroy technically destroy ya. draw a card for the turn it is steam vents let's i don't really care about most of the cards in my hand so i'm kind of like well let's go ahead and put that into play tapped and we will Pay four mana for Song of Creation. So that we can start going crazy whenever we... We'll draw a card, and if we can cast it, then we'll start going bananas with it. But for now, this means that we are attacking with 921 damage by itself. Is that correct? 17 plus 421. Yeah, so that's a one shot right there. And we also need to put another plus one plus encounter on here. <laughs> because we cast a spell this turn. Wow. So who do we attack? That's the good question. Um, I guess actually, I think it makes sense. We go ahead and we're probably going to get it. So we're going to counterspell the Song of Creation. Because <laughs> screw Animar. <laughs> then that means that we will definitely take all the damage. <laughs> no, plus 5, 21. And this. No, crap. Yeah. So now we are at, we are down to two decks once again. That is, that is this Animar deck for sure. <laughs> That seems to be what happens if he doesn't if he doesn't lose like if the Animar deck doesn't see Animar die within the first couple of turns it seems to kind of take over it it's it's hard to fight off Animar especially with this mutate build because there's so much that can happen and the mutate powers it up while putting counters on it just like seems like one of the fastest way one of the fastest ways outside of actual straight combo to get Animar to dealing the most damage and powering it up the quickest. Okay, so Feather, what can you do in a single turn? Can you, I guess, actually 
Untap, draw a card. Sunforger, interesting. I mean, it's still not really enough, but what we can do is tap two for Mindstone. And this means that we do have Apostle's Blessing. So we have target creature or artifact. You control gains protection from artifacts and or color the color of your choice until end of turn. So we can use Apostle's Blessing to semi-permanently block Animar. Um, but that's not really like a, a permanent solution here. That is a, a barely functional solution. So we are going to pass here. And I think what we're going to also do is we're going to move Animar over a little bit. Because I don't want to spin this table all the way around every single time, so. Hmm. One more set of cards. Okay, here we go. Untap. So all we need is, what we really need is trample. So we're going to go ahead and grant... Animar this. Oh wait, and if we, yeah, if we got countered, we still have cards in our hand. Okay, so. Draw a card. It is Stomping Grounds. So let's go ahead and put that into play tapped. Oh, actually, well, wait. No, because we don't have an, Ancient Ziggurat is not doing us any favors here. Wait, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, so we can cast two spells this turn. So let's go and take two damage. Um, so we can do two spells this turn. Because I think we need to press on them as much as possible. So let's go ahead and do... One, two, three. And that gets us Domri Raid. So we are going to put Domri... Actually, no, we do. Let's go and do f up to four because we want to look at the top card of our library. This Forgotten Ancients gets another choke, uh, another counter. So we look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, you may reveal it. It's not. Okay, so that was a way that we could get another creature that has trample, like a mutate card that has trample. But otherwise, we're going to tap three and play Primal Empathy, which will put another counter on Forgotten Ancients. And yeah, so the beginning of our upkeep, we do it. So let's go ahead and attack with Destroya. Feather is going to do Apostle's Blessing, which will deal a damage, and we get protection with on Feather. And then we that card will return back to our hand. Okay. That's all Animar is going to do. And I don't think there's anything else that we really... Is there anything... Did we want to attack with them? I, it seems like actually we do want to go ahead and attack with Mecha Godzilla because it is a 6-6. Six, six, so that does seem like an okay move. Ranging Raptors as well because they're going to block with Feather on the flying side. So yeah, let's just go ahead and attack with a few creatures. And why not Forgotten Ancients as well? So we have... Three more cards. I think that... What's our life total? I, I think we're going to go ahead and take the damage. Yeah, we haven't taken like any damage this turn. So, or this game. So, 10 damage. Okay. That will add up very quickly, but it does save us some, turn, some time. And Firebrand Archer does um, deal damage when we cast spells so that's at least a good thing there so untap draw a card reckless charge so how much health so we need to deal we need to find a way to deal 19 damage It 
it would help if we had the primal amulet out already. I mean, it would also help if we had Aetherflux Reservoir because then we would have just, we would have absolutely killed that way. Um, because we don't even have enough mana to, man, this sucks. Okay, I think we we try to hold off another turn. Let's go in Fist of Flame, which will draw us a card. That is a mountain, that's awesome. We will go ahead and play that mountain. Um, but we still have that Apostle's Blessing thing. So yeah, this is gonna return to our hand. We're not going to attack. We are going to discard a card. I think we discard Tests of Faith. And we, the Fist of Flame will come into our hand, back into our hand. So really, they still need Trample. We, we have a very short window where we can do something. Uh, movie Monsters took another damage. Because if we can do Sunforger next turn, get it out, then we can double. We may be able to double strike our way into victory. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so this actually went up to three. So we're going to untap. Untap. We're going to move these... Um, do we move these three? Well, yeah, so we upkeep and upkeep. Um, I guess I'm going to leave the three counters on Forgotten Ancients for now. So then we upkeep. We have the creature with the most power, so we're going to draw... Yeah, we draw an extra card, so Void Slime. Then we draw a card for the turn. Cross and Grip. Okay, that's really, really strong right now. Um, let's Domri Raid. So we know they have protection, so it doesn't really help us to fight a creature. We can just move our way closer to um, its ultimate. So let's go and look at the top card of our library. It is not a creature. Stinky. But we do now have Void Slime and Cross and Grip. So I think actually here what we're going to do is we're going to Cross and Grip the Chrome Mox. Because that's slamming their mana. So they're going to add one white mana and probably leave it at that maybe. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's... Oof, that's gonna be... That's harsh. Okay, so... Destroyer is going to go attack... For a lot of damage. They are going... Oh, wait, so I guess, actually, before the end of that phase, they would need to cast Apostle's Blessing. No, they could cast Apostle's Blessing here. So, declare all attackers now. So, these guys are going to go. And actually, this got another counter from the Cross and Grip. Okay, so, we're going to lose two life and try an attempt to cast Apostle's Blessing. But, will that... We cast it, so... Yeah, when we cast it, so... We do get the trigger from the um, Firebrand Archer. But then we have the mana available to three, and we're going to Void Slime the Apostle's Blessing so that it doesn't even come back either. So now Feather absolutely has to block to save the life total, and it dies. Yeah. I think that makes it game over. I think that's it. And this is going to go up to five here. So, five, six, seven, 13 damage that goes unblocked. Putting the feather deck down to 15 life. We can take a look here. This is actually pretty close because I guess I probably could have been a little bit smarter about it and had I had Void Slime in hand, so I suppose I sh could have done that smarter, but untap, draw a card. Otherworldly Journey, man. 
Oh, that sucks. Okay, so I don't think that there's anything else I can do because they have a blocker, so they can they can end up blocking my firebrand. I can't do Sunforger this turn. I don't have enough mana. Spawning Breath doesn't really help me. Fists of Flames doesn't really help me. Yeah, I think that's actually it. I think I have to scoop. That's that's it for Feather. <laughs> oh, it's too bad the Song of Creation got, got canceled. Okay, well... Oh, man. Okay, so that's it for tonight. I think I'm going to go ahead and close up now. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed this silliness that I had in front of me. Um, and we will continue. So there'll be some more magic on Sunday. The plan is presumably to go ahead and do a, another to continue doing Saturday streams where I kind of play whatever game I want to right now we're playing Earthbound if you're interested in that at all um, but magic is still what I want to focus on it'll just be extra stuff every so often so thank you all for watching and I will see you next time <laughs>